Hello, I'm Pinball Wiz, and this is a t tutorial for Space Cadet Pinball, a game that was originally released as part of a Microsoft Windows 95 Plus package back in August 19 1995. Uh, however, despite its popularity uh, throughout its porting ac across multiple Windows operating systems, most fam famously the Windows XP portion of Space Cadet, um, this is the 1.0 release of Space Cadet, where there are still some missing features from the table. And this is the version that we will not be playing, as a matter of fact. We'll pause right here, and we'll change on scenes over to the true Space Cadet experience, version 1.1, uh, created by Cinematronics and Maxis, released just a few months after the initial 1.0 release. To start a new game, and we'll be on our way. We'll go in more into depth uh, as to how the game works, each of its mechanics, and uh, how to go, go about uh, just by uh, scoring throughout the main missions. We'll discuss which missions to go for and which to avoid as best as, as possible. So right from the plunge, we will be going for a skill shot. If you notice the yellow lights that are strobing upwards to the top of the playfield. Uh, there's six different lights to go for, uh, with the third one from the bottom being the most viable one. So a plunge that's about the, at the second arrow would be uh, midway between a first and a second arrow uh, from the top. So not quite there, but it's still pretty valuable, and it gets a ball to your flipper. And over here, we'll just want to be aiming for Kind of a primary objective, just by hitting the whatever is blinking. In this case, the blue arrow is pointing to the uh, left side of the target bank. Hitting one of the targets will activate your missions at the ramp, and in this case, it'll be the launch training mission. And from here, we'll, be, we'll want to hit the ramp uh, three more times to finish the mission. The ramp shot is a fairly general shot from the right flipper. Uh, it's also backhandable from the left, so if you, if you get into rhythm uh, by backhanding it around, from, even from a clean feed uh, from the left end lane, we'll be able to get that nail down and our mission's finished. So already a big difference from the Space Cadet version compared to Full Tilt, where if you complete a mission in this case, you'll be getting a, what's called a replay, and more or less an extra ball. You can only have one replay uh, at a time, so you want to take you know, into big consideration as to what, you know, when to complete your missions. And that's the overall premise of this game: completing missions and advancing through ranks. You'll notice also when you, whenever you complete a mission, you have a set of blue lights that'll flash up in the middle of the playfield. I mean, you see them strobing, but that in effect does nothing. It's it's more or less of a light show. But the blue lights in the center more or less tell you how far, you're, how far you are as far as uh, your next rank goes. And over in the center with the, your yellow lights, that determines what rank you are and what set of missions you'll be playing on uh, throughout the course of the game. So from here, we'll want to hit the bumpers eight times. Uh, hitting the ball up to the bumpers will send the ball in a little bit of danger, but uh, what we want to do here instead is one, refuel, since uh, we, we ne don't necessarily want to lose on our mission. Over time, your fuel depletes on the left side, and if it ever completely depletes, you're, you'll be ejected out of the mission. You'll have to start uh, all the way that process all the way from the beginning. What I wanted to do here, because this is very interesting, there's a set of wormhole rules that uh, carries over from uh, both versions of the game. If you hit the target next to the right spinner, uh, the, the lone target and not the three bank of drops, 
if you hit that target, uh, it'll open a set of three wormholes. Uh, and change, and hitting the spinner or wormhole, wormhole target again will uh, change which wormhole is ready to go. In this case, it's green. Hitting a ball in the incorrect wormhole uh, scoop will essentially carry that ball over to that, in, over to the correct one and kick it out from there. And there's the loaf wheel uh, warning that uh, just popped up right over there. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate what happened, but we have our extra ball. We don't need to worry about that as much. But, um... On 3D Pinball Space Cadet, if you hit the correct wormhole, it gives you a replay. Which is essentially what you just saw with the replay ball, uh, just as soon as I drained. Let's go ahead and a short plunge. And I'll explain a little bit more. On full tilt, however... It does not give you a replay. It locks the ball instead. This kind of leads into one of the big unused aspects of full tilt and well, well rather space cadet in the Windows version anyway. And we'll go in more into that uh, as we get further along. So we're already one ball down. There's a couple of ways to get get an extra ball in the game. But both are fairly difficult to get to intentionally. Let's go ahead and clear this mission and get our safety net up and running again. Extra balls are different than what you would consider replays. There we go. Since we completed our third mission, we filled up the a set of blue lights around the middle of the playfield, and we advanced through one rank. There's actually a known bug that, uh... that can be exploited. Especially in, uh, the 3D pinball version. I mean, even in, then again, in both versions of the game. But let's go ahead and lock our second, second ball. There's a set of three unused lights on the playfield in 3D pinball for Windows. If you can spot them, you get brownie points. <laughs> but those of you who know, already know uh, the full tail version, you'll know what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, on the rank two, the, the set of missions here are slightly different. Uh, some of them being more akin to uh, to the training missions. Uh, in this case, uh, this mission right here will involve both the uh, upgrading the attack bumpers at the re at, at the re-entry lanes and hitting the bumpers eight times. Kind of similar to what we've seen previously. Let's kind of build up uh, elsewhere. We have our third warm roll opened. And that would have been a really, really nice backhand. Let's go ahead and full plunge this time around. We have a better chance of hitting the correctly lit warm roll. Get in control. Let's hit the ramp and uh, get our drill ro rolling again. I'd like to take this opportunity actually to get our uh, center post up and running. This is the third hyperspace reward that we want to get. It's pretty important too. Or we could just fill the shots. Uh, at the very least, get the spinner uh, to change up the wormhole to our correct positions. And here's where the gameplay differs from uh, 3D Pinball Space Cadet. This game has multi-ball. And here's a scenario that I don't necessarily want to be in right now. And thank goodness that didn't happen. There's a known bug that happens during multi-ball in this game. Where... If more than one ball falls down that end lane from the ramp, uh, that end lane will no longer function and uh, we'll, we won't be able to refuel our ship as easy, easily or efficiently. So you're probably thinking to yourselves, multi-ball. Big deal, right? 
It actually is a big deal because there's more balls on the play field. You have more, uh, you have more chances to clear out the bases. It sometimes may not work out in your favor, but some of the parts on the upper part of the play field are a little bit difficult to access just by utilizing your flippers. So. There's our, one of our sources for the extra ball. Very, very good. There we go. And we're just kind of weighing things out. Nice. And we'll get started on our next mission. There's a little bit of fumble right there, but we'll be fine. We're still on multi-ball. If you're already in multi-ball, the wormhole rules revert to its previous state back in, uh, uh, back in, uh, 3D Pinball for Windows, where it'll be getting replay instead of, uh, instead of a lock for multi-ball. Once you're in multi-ball, you can't start another session until you're back in single ball play. It's a little bit of a shame, too. We can't, uh, go... Uh, a little bit more in depth at the moment as far as the missions go. They, they really do vary. There's one more mission that we skipped on playing uh, back in a training set uh, called Science Mission, where it involves drop targets. There's a secret mission that you can activate by clearing out the three bank on the left side of the playfield, but that involves a uh, more difficult set. It's not the most difficult uh, mission that I've have ever faced. You're gonna need to hit all three wormholes. And this wormhole specifically located at the green shot. It is not easy to hit at all. So let's go ahead and uh, get ready and all set for multi-ball again and clear out our next mission. <laughs> Another thing about extra balls, uh, in Space Cadet for, uh, for Windows, you cannot, well, you can have as many extra balls as you like, and in here, you can only have one at a time. My guess is that they, uh, didn't want the game to go infinitely long, and they want to have a little bit shorter game time, but they compensated for, uh, giving a replay for after almost every mission. There are a couple of ex exceptions to giving replays for missions, so... We just could keep an eye out for that. All trapped up and ready to go again for our next block. Correct. Gets up again. Make a shot. Block a ball. There's a few more missions that we'll be discussing in this set. Some that involve hitting the hyperspace loop and drop targets. That's unfortunate. Here's another that focuses on targets only, and... And the one that we just discussed earlier, the, uh, the secret mission involving those three wormholes. Oh, that would've been so nice if it went in like that. Now, since we have an extra ball, it, even though we drain, even though we'll be able to drain from this, uh, it's not going to be that bad. Bounce it over, get control, and we'll activate multi ball. There's actually a known bug that can happen uh, where you can. Get a little bit further. As far as uh, starting missions. And there it is. So what just happened right there? Now I'll try and trap up just to kind of ex explain what just happened. Normally, when you rank up, all the blue lights flash at the same time. If, if you're able to start a mission quickly enough or drink quickly enough, all the blue lights will remain active on the field. 
And this is actually a speedrun tactic that, uh, that we'll be using uh, a little bit later on, if that applies. We're not speedrunning this, but uh, it, it's a very, very... It's a very, very neat ex exploit to... kind of witness. So we're in our... Uh, we're in another mission. Right now we need to hit our drop, drop targets on the right side, which we just did. Now we need to hit the hyperspace. Now since we utilize an exploit, we only need one mission to rank up instead of just the normal three that we've been uh, doing in the past. Let's go ahead and hit the ramp, refuel, and hit our hyperspace. There's another method to this, and it's by tilting the ball. If you drain in this version, uh, since it gives a replay, uh, that method no longer applies here, but tilting is the main exception. It poses a risk as well to the your ball. It works on Space Cadet, but uh, over here on full tilt, it's uh, a little bit more difficult to achieve. So we're in our third set of missions. And some of them being the most notoriously difficult out of them. There we go. The black hole mission is by far the easiest in this set. Uh, there's a couple of other missions that uh, you'll want to typically avoid uh, as far as that goes. There's uh, what's called radiation, where you have to hit the... You have to hit this set of drop spot targets and then hitting a wormhole, any wormhole for that matter, or hitting this set of targets and then hitting the hyperspace launch. Hitting all three targets will activate uh, Cosmic Plague, which is a set of spinners followed by the green rollover at the top of the play field located right here. Lock a ball. Typically when the uh, when the wormhole is set on the yellow light, I try to take that opportunity as quickly as I can. That extra ball is nullified. Yeah, whenever, whenever that light is yellow instead of green or orange or rather red for that matter. I just try to take that opportunity as quickly as I can. Gravity well. And here's why here's why gravity well is a little bit annoying. There's a there's a magnet that's present around the red light and it pulls the ball in. Kind of similar to how the magnets are, affect the ball in the Adams family in a uh, random fashion. It can cause uh, it can cause you to drain your ball, especially during a mode like Seance or uh, just any multi-ball mode for that matter. It can be annoying to deal with, but if you can normalize the gravity as soon as possible, you'll be back to accurate shot making it as quickly as possible. Going back in. Black hole is easy, just hit complete the upper lanes, and back end the black hole. It is possible to aim for the black hole, but it in itself is very, very difficult to aim for otherwise. From here, you can trap up, make sure the ball has a little bit more give, and back end just like that. Once you get that uh, dialed in, you can complete the black hole mission at ease. It really is no problem once you're used to the timing. Yeah, space Radiation and Stray Comet are the missions are, that I want to avoid as much as possible. There are two kickbacks, one on each side of the playfield. I would consider the left kickback to be of the utmost importance since the ball tends to drain down, down that way a whole lot. Oh, there's Cosmic Plague.
Right now, I want to get back to trying to activate the black hole mission. Lowermost target, and then... Snap shot. Each mission has its own location on the target bank, so... If you can recognize which missions are located where on the, on the three bank of targets, you know where to... Where to aim for them based on the location of, of the ball and in, in relation to the flipper. You'll be able to get uh, the mission that you want. Trap up. Beautiful. A little bit unfortunate with that kick out, but at the very least we have our replay. Going out, we're on rank 5. And same set of missions as before. After this, we'll be able to go for a little bit of an easier time. If the ball rolls out of the ramp like that, uh, just a simple nudge will get it back onto your flipper, no problem. The thing about pinball, really, is it's a game about patience. You want to know where the ball is going to be going instead of just fl uh, flying about. That was unfortunate aiming on my part. That was the correct play aiming for the ramp, but uh, I misaimed and it cost me my ball. There we go. One shot to black hole. If we make the ramp, then that's fine. It's just gonna give me another chance to aim for that. It is a difficult shot otherwise. So sweet. <laughs> All right, here we go. One more black hole mission. Or rather two, but even then. Gotta try and aim for the left ramp to keep trying to get back in control. The other option is to go for multi ball. But uh, I think we only have one lock and our wormhole isn't ready to, to go. It's a dangerous tar uh, shot to, the, to this target right over here, too. So. It's kind of being a little bit conservative as far as my uh, choice making goes. Nudge right here. Let it bounce. Gain control. Attempt the backhand. Rinse and repeat. As long as you keep hitting the ramp, you're pretty much good to go. Since your you know, fuel is going to be refueled every single time you hit the ramp for the most part. With a couple of exceptions. Black hole mission is a little bit tedious, but even then. And it's gonna return. Beautiful. Now here's what we want. Uh, I would actually like to have the center post active. Just providing an extra little bit of safety now that my kickbacks are depleted. The only way to get your kickbacks ready to go again is either by draining without a replay or uh, by completing any of the three banks uh, up at the top of the playfield. 
Stray Comet is not what I'm looking for. If you activate either Stray Comet or radi Radiation, uh, the target banks will reset. You only need to complete them all from scratch, so... And a big reason why I am uh, staying away from those specifically is because, for the most part, you can't really aim for, aim for them for, for the flipper. You're gonna mainly re not need to rely on other shots to help you out. In other parts of the playfield. There we go. Bounce it over. Probably hit the ramp again, just in case. It's quite a bit of patience. When, yeah, once you finish your mission, you can do a little bit of celebration, a little bit of victory dance. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's, oh. And I'm pretty sure that would have given me my ball save as well, but uh, that's one of the unfortunate things about this game where the timers really don't have any grace period. But once the light turns off, it's off. Even though the light was still flashing when the ball drained down the right side, it didn't give me my ball back. As was intended uh, in later games like... Uh, you would see in modern day arcades. So now we're in a little bit of trouble right here. I'm on my third ball. I'm gonna need an extra ball pretty soon or uh, the game will be over, over and I'll be starting all the way from scratch. Uh, rank one. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's quite an unfortunate thing that can happen where if you if the ball drains down after using a kickback, uh, it can go down that same kickback lane. Uh, there's really nothing it, it can do about that. Come on. Get back in control. Hit the ramp. And try for that black hole shot again. Let's get a replay. It does take a little bit of time. Oh, that would so nice. Kind of give it a little bit of a bump right there. Uh, that drop target is sometimes known to send the ball down the left out lane, so that's why I did that. Oh no. Kind of resetting. Trap up. And keep trying at it. Because that's it's sometimes all that pinball is. You just keep trying at it until you either succeed or fail. Even though I may have to ramp too many times in a row, uh, it ensures that I keep my uh, fuel topped up. I'd certainly like to try and go further, but it seems like all the other shots are a little bit too dangerous to go for at the moment. Oh, go in, please. Trap up. Not quite there yet. We did have it previously, though, so... It's gonna take too long for us to find it again. Not quite there.
That's odd. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's what we've been looking for all this time. All right, rank six. Let's not have that happen again, please. <laughs> right, new set of missions. The Doomsday Machine is outlanes. Exactly why would they put in a mission where it involves outlanes? The other missions are recon, which involves hitting any of the lanes, the rollover switches, or satellite, re satellite retrieval, which involves hitting this top corner bumper right over here. Uh, by completing the three bank of targets, uh, it'll ready up a mission called Time Warp, which involves hitting the slingshots a few times and then hitting either the ramp to rank up or the hyperspace loop to rank down, oddly enough. So let's activate the recon mission or, or drain. And we'll uh, go from there. After this, ranks 7 and 8 will be a rehash of three missions plus the final mission called Maelstrom. Alright, at the very least, I'd like to activate one or two missions from here to kind of, kind of drive the point home. And hope to refuel. The recon mission is one of the easiest missions to complete. If you can successfully nail the ramp uh, however many times in a row, you'll be pretty good to go. And assuming you can also survive everything else in the process. Well, there's two out lanes. <laughs> the kickback counts as two lanes. Oh, come on. That was it. Oh, thank goodness for that. Even if the ball falls down in an out lane, I'll be good to go. There we go. Now replay up and running again. And I think we'll start working on our next extra ball. Just to kind of stay safe. Now, oddly enough, also, you'll notice more and more progress lights are being lit up after each mission, uh, depending on the rank that you're on. Uh, starting from rank 6 and going forward, you need two missions to rank up instead of the, t the typical three. Oh, that, that would have been a nice lock, too. Mission's currently on satellite retrieval. I do not want that. Let's try and go for time warp instead. Let's lock a ball. Uh, or, you know, we have choices. I mean, we could try for satellite retrieval. It just depends on what flipper I'm on. Uh, priorities may change. There we go. That's our second lock, and then... I'll be getting my ball back. If both lights uh, on near the flippers are lit or flashing, uh, this light takes priority. If that's still flashing by the time the ball drains, uh, you, you will get your ball back. Actually, now might be a good time to see what happens when uh, the fuel runs out. I actually want to go for multi-ball right here. If your fuel runs out, you are not able to start missions. If, you're, if your fuel runs out while you're in the mission, you're back into normal play. So satellite retrieval. You'll need to hit three of the top bumper. And that's not really an easy thing to go for. There's a center post. There's a second lock. So I was miscounting, that was my fault. Oh, don't you dare. Oh, boy. I'm willing to bet that timer was near zero by the time the ball drained. I'm really thankful for that ball save. 
Oh, and that would have been a nice multi-ball start, too. There's our kickback. You have your bonus multipliers that can, uh, you'll be able to collect out near the bumpers. You have a whole set of other bonuses that you can get from the side drop targets. Oh, don't you dare drain. Oh, and that would have been a nice multi-ball start right there, too. Let's get our center post up and running again. And probably light our extra ball as well. I don't know. If we could change ever, that'd be really nice. Bounce it over. Now, here's why that's not such a good idea. Oh, that would have been so nice. Lots of missed opportunities to start multi ball. Maybe we can trap up on the left flipper, or at the very least, have the ball fall in just like that. Hey, satellite bumper. <laughs> what gives? Of course. Oh no. Get out of there. Let's light up our extra ball. This is kind of demonstrate. Oh, and our gravity ball. Straight down an L lane, as long as the extra ball lights are still flashing. Or ready to go, anyway. If we have our extra ball light, it ensures that we have another chance. It's actually a bad idea to activate the gravity well. Uh, it, it deactivates all the other lights on the uh, on that loop. And I'll have to work all the way towards them again. Oh, don't you dare! Thank you. All right, multi ball. And there's kind of the danger. Sometimes the kickers can lead the ball down in that lane. Let's trap up. Get our replay. Trap up. Let's get our extra ball rolling again. Let's get our, upper, uh, our center post going again. And try to clear out the mission. If there's a mission that you don't particularly like, you can just time it out by holding a ball on a flipper. It is possible to clear out this mission, but even then, it is a really, really difficult time. Multi ball does nothing as far as jackpots or anything of that goes, but it can help uh, clear out your missions. Especially uh, in cases like this, if you're having any trouble. That's unfortunate. That was a little bit of a misplay right over here, too. I think what I might do is just uh, hold the flipper. Let the mission run out and then uh, try and get a better run going. Actually, as a matter of fact, now that I'm thinking about it, this might work. There's actually a way you can get the extra ball uh, just by doing nothing from the hyperspace loop. Sometimes the ball will hit the flipper, bounce off the slingshot post, and then uh, down the left out lane, and that, that can work. 
Why is this mission hate <laughs> Some of the missions aren't really the best to go for. But even then, you can time things out and it will take no penalty against you. The only penalty is rank-wise is by hitting the wrong shot at the time warp. Yeah, let's see what mission we're on. Recon? That's a much better one to get into. So just to kind of showcase what happens if you run out of fuel during a mission. If you're on a mission that's not nece necessarily best to finish, it's not bad to consider just taking the time to trap up and choosing a different one to go for in advance through a rank. And take an easier one. Alright, let's get our extra ball lit again. Tired of that or we, uh, active, uh, walk another ball. Overall, the game is mostly the same compared to the Windows XP version. Or let alone the same version that was, uh, ported from Windows 95 Plus. Over to XP, but, uh, this is the de definitive version. Mostly the same, albeit with uh, graphical enhancements and a couple of rule changes that make this game a more fun experience. Doomsday Machine, or we can Time Warp. Since both of the other targets are ready to go. To go. Now hopefully... No. You know what? No. Let, let's check out Doomsday. Or just... Okay then. Welcome to Pinball. The game just skipped the kickback. Really unfortunate way to drain out right there too. Now let's get back in control. Let's go for our anchor space or just miss and aim for the target instead. And lock a ball for a ball safe. Satellite retrieval again. You know what? I'm just tempted to take this just to make the ramp shot. Sarah, that already just... Better idea. I hope that was a better idea anyway. Ideally, I want to have the ball go up and down the lanes all the time. Just so I'm not able to clean, clear out the mission a lot more easily. Oh, don't you dare go down an out lane. There we go. Get ready to play again. And... One more for rank 8. Rank 8 and 9 are the same sets of missions, but... Uh, they're mostly a rehash of uh, missions from previous sets. Notably from Secret on ranks 2 and 3. You have Cosmic Plague from 4 and 5. And Time Warp from 6 and 7. There is one more mission though, if you uh, manage to take, take it all the way, called Maelstrom. It is one of the hardest missions uh, that's available in Space Cadet, and I was only ab ever able to do it twice, so don't expect it for me to do it on uh, on this portion of the, of the tutorial. Maelstrom is a series of challenges that you'll need to complete, uh, with the culmination of it being the hyperspace loop. Shots also include hitting the fuel lane, you have uh, 
target stain floor, you have lane stain floor, in including in this, in this one as an example, and so on and so forth. It is a gauntlet. That was unfortunate. Unfortunate with the way how it ended, uh, including with how the ball drained uh, by the time I got the extra ball at, the, at that out lane. Uh, with it just skipping the kickback like that, I was uh, I was not able to utilize that, and it cost me a, a ball in the process. It, it was a good showing. Uh, we'll be able to, we'll be playing another game uh, this time with a timer, uh, just kind of showcase uh, in, in a speedrunner's eyes what it's like to play this game, and trying to reach Fleet Admiral as quickly as possible. In the meantime, we'll be answering some questions we have uh, in a chat room. The props to uh, everyone watching so, thus far in the broadcast. Uh, multiball is confusing. Uh, so yeah, that's a big rule change as far as uh, Full Tilt goes from the 3D pinball version. If you've played the Windows XP version of the game, uh, do keep in mind that the worm wormhole rules uh, differ very drastically. Uh, in here compared to compared to that. Uh, if you had the correct wormhole, uh, say yellow on yellow, you lock a ball instead of getting a replay. That rule is not applied until you uh, are already in multi-ball. Yeah. Typically, in, uh, for multi-ball to start, you need to lock three balls. And right here, those are three lights that will be used to uh, to denote that uh, multi-ball is, is indeed active. In the Windows XP version, Black Hole is almost guaranteed to get rid of the right kickback. Yeah, the physics also differ, albeit slightly, uh, if they get rid of certain rail railroads or uh, pathways that uh, may direct a ball to an out lane in the case of certain missions, so. All right, let's get started with our uh, speedrun portion of the game. We will not be going for a world record, but just to kind of showcase uh, how to go about things as far as main missions go and what you'll need to do to get the fleet arm as quickly as possible. Uh, you'll need to get your ball at near or near a flipper at all times. Uh, we'll be using a or abusing a few bugs in this game as well uh, to make this process a lot more quick, uh, uh, a lot quicker than usual. From what you've seen on the earlier section, uh, back when we were, when we were multi-ball on uh, at around rank two and three, I was able to utilize a glitch to be able to activate a mission while the blue lights are still flashing. So, on a countdown of three, two, one, and we'll get started. We want to get a ball on the flipper as quickly as possible. Score does not matter, so we'll be ignoring those as aspects as much as possible. Anytime a ball drains or it's up in the upper portion of the playfield, we'll be losing quite a bit of time. Multi-ball does help as far as clearing out missions go, but it may take quite a little bit of time to set up. Re-entry mission uh, is tolerable. We need three lanes. Up top, and... Well, Actually, you know what? This is a really good advantage to have. I intentionally aim for the normal right here so that I can get two lanes right off the bat. And I don't have to worry about it. I'm trying to aim for the upper lanes directly. So that's one mission down. Like I said, anyone watching this video after the broadcast, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to link, link them in the comments below. 
Anyone watching the live feed, uh... You'll be able to ask questions in there as well. Let's get our next mission up and running. Uh, we're currently almost two minutes in. The current world record for this is slightly below 20 minutes. So as far as that timing goes, it's not very good. But uh, we're not going for a world record. We're, we're just kind of showcasing uh, a little bit going into how a speedrunner space could that pinball works. Let's do this again. If, if anything. Almost had it drained that way too. It really is unfortunate. What in the world? It really is unfortunate how um, the ball could do that at times. And there we go. Getting our replay back. A little bit unfortunate bounce into the wormhole. One more mission, and we'll discuss uh, the other big exploit in this game. Uh, and pretty much involves the same process, but... Uh, a little bit different methodology. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why would why would you tilt the ball? Because the game gives me a replay, it's inefficient for me to drain by, by itself. Since it's gonna toggle the replay ball. You're able to drain in uh in, in an earlier version of Space Cadet, but uh considering that when you if you drain right after finishing a mission, uh the same effect applies as if you started another mission uh, while the blue lights are still flashing. So in both games, the methodology is different. It just depends on if you if the if you have a replay available or not. Or if, if you're in a multi ball mode. That would have been a nice lock to have. I'm usually consistent on that shot. It's a, it's very late on the flipper. I usually know where it is. Strap up. And a little bit late. For the third time! That kickback is very, very inconsistent. Bounce it over. Let's see if we can get a replay. Now, since we are on limited resources, I'm really tempted not to uh, go forth and abusing that bug again until I have an extra ball. So, a little bit of safety versus risk factor as far as speedrunning this game goes and, and trying to get a world record. Another big part of uh, speedrunning this game is deciding which missions are really the best to go for. Each mission has its own r risk factor as well, so... Put that in into consideration, which shots are safe, which ones are risky to go for. Targets being used... Targets and bumpers usually the, being the riskiest of them all. Let alone outlines and, and the upper pop bumper. It just depends on what, what you're aiming for in the long term. Some of them are quick, but can be uh, fairly luck-based. Others can be safe, but rather time-consuming. It's more of a pick-or-poison type of ordeal. Good thing that didn't drain right there. 
Bounce it over. And it may just clear the mission by itself. Those kinds of things can happen in this game, so I don't really be that surprised. Low fuel. I disagree. Gravity roll. Gravity roll is a little bit annoying, but uh, we will we'll be able to deal with it. And hopefully, we'll have the target. There we go. Alright, nice, we got an extra ball. It did cost me a replay, but... At the same time, uh, it guarantees that we can, uh, abuse the glitch one more time. Back in the same target mission? Hopefully we'll be able to activate multi-ball, that, that's something very, very strong to have. There's a couple of other bonuses that I uh, forgot to mention earlier in the, in the earlier in, in the tutorial, and those being uh, on the right side drop targets. Uh, there's a set, there's a section of different different bonuses that you can get uh, from this set right here. Uh, first being lighting the spinners, the second set being uh, activating a jackpot. The third and the fourth dealing with activating and holding uh, the uh, mission and end of ball bonus. Which can be fairly crucial when you're playing for score. So yeah, one more to go. Let's get our center post going, and... We already have our extra ball, so getting our fourth uh, hyperspace award will practically be useless. And even then, lighting a kickback or two would really come in handy as well. All right, there's one. Now here's an annoying thing about the rescue mission. Uh, right here, it's asking to upgrade the flags, or in this case, the spinner. If I clear that drop target bank while this light is still on, it's still gonna ask to uh, complete this drop target bank again and light the spinner before hitting the hyperspace. So it's going to require a little bit of waiting time. Uh, much to my annoyance, but we'll just have to we'll just have to wait. That's all there is to it. Tired of that, or we let the fuel run out and try another mission. I don't know why that's a bug in, uh, in this iteration. I'm not sure if it exists in uh, 3D Pinball for Windows, but... It is a thing that exists in here, I don't know why. Meanwhile, more waiting up at the bumpers. There we go. Ah, uh, it's gonna activate gravity well. But uh, if we either activate multi ball or. Actually, please just refuel before I lose out on the mission. Thank you.
right, let's trap up again. I think I'm gonna tilt out again. The fourth and fifth set of missions can be annoying. Oh, or ranks anyway. The ones containing space radiation and uh, black hole and the cosmic plague. It, the spinner does time out too, so if, if that happens, they're gonna hit that uh, drop target bank again. There we go. Tilt was deliberate. All the blue lights are lit again. And we're one away from ranking up again. Uh, let's not activate space radiation, please. Bounce it over. Good save. Really? And just to go more into the process of how, uh, of what kind of choices you need to make as, as far as control goes. Same on my third ball. I can't tilt out anymore intentionally without getting an extra ball. It also makes making shots uh, a little bit more risky in the process. So. And just like that. But just to kind of give an idea of how, uh, from a speedrunner's perspective, of what kind of choices you would want to make as far as you know, tilting out to advance through ranks more quickly. Uh, even just go by going and playing multi ball. Uh, and of using that uh, rank up glitch. It's a way to access the ranks further up more quickly, but at the same time, it's uh, a little bit of a risk since pinball is traditionally a three ball game. You don't really have that much room for error. And that's the tutorial for Space Cadet. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope to do more of these in the future. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys again in another video. Take care.